Hi, I'm Logan with NAS, and today I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get your Victron Energy System connected to the internet, set up on the VRM site, and how to share access with us here at NAS. We specialize in complete system design and integration, and we offer troubleshooting and tech support service for the entire life of your NAS design system. When you share access to your system with NAS, it allows us to configure and monitor the system remotely. This ensures that the system's performance is as optimized as possible, and it's also an extremely useful tool for troubleshooting should you run into any problems down the road. Let's take a look at how this works. So here in front of me, we've got a little demonstration system with some Victron products pre-wired on a board. Um, again, not, not a live system by any means, it's just so we can have the devices show up. Uh, populating on the VRM. <clears throat> Everything here is getting powered by a, a 12 volt power supply and then it's just a few common Victron components that you'd see in a typical installation. Uh, we've got a, a 100-50 charge controller, a smart shunt. This is the 12 volt multi plus two and then the servo GX which is sort of the brains of the whole system here. So the first step uh, what I'm going to show you here in this video is connecting your Servo GX to the internet. And there's two ways that I'm gonna show you how to do this, the two most common ways. Uh, we can do it using our mobile device on Victron Connect. And then you can also do it from your GX touchscreen uh, on site right in front of the equipment as well. So if you're doing it on a mobile device, we're gonna use the Victron Connect app. So open up Victron Connect, make sure your Bluetooth is turned on. Uh, as soon as you have Victron Connect open, and then that's gonna take you to the device list. So on your device list, you should see your Servo GX as one of the devices. Go ahead and select the Servo. It may prompt you for the Bluetooth pin. If you have not entered it in already, go ahead and do so now. Uh, so go ahead and enter that. The default pin is uh, six zeros, zero, 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 unless you've already changed it to something else. and now we're connected to the Servo GX in Victron Connect. Uh, once you've connected to the Servo GX in the Victron Connect app, uh, you'll see a gear icon located in the top right corner that takes us to settings. And once we click on the settings, now we have an option for network. Okay, so this is where you will see all of your near uh, or close by Wi-Fi networks. If the one that you want to connect to isn't showing up, you can do a manual scan for networks. Uh, we're going to pick the office Wi-Fi here to connect to. That's our wind and sun. Uh, click on that network. It may prompt you for your password. Go ahead and enter your Wi-Fi password, and then your Servo GX from there should be connected to the internet. So next we'll take a look at the internet connection process using the GX touch display. Uh, so I've got one of these in my hand here. Usually these are gonna be mounted on a wall or you know somewhere inside of a panel. Um, but again, just for the purpose of our little demo system here, I've just got it in my hand at the moment. So from the main uh, pages screen of the GX display, assuming the servo is connected and powered up, this is gonna be the main screen that you see. Just tap on the display to bring up the menu button. From the menu uh, or device list, you go to settings and then you're gonna scroll down to Wi-Fi, okay? Once you're in Wi-Fi, select Wi-Fi networks, then you should see your Wi-Fi network showing up on this list. In our case, our network is Wind and Sun, or Wind Sun. Uh, once you've selected your network, it'll prompt you for the password. Go ahead and enter your password, and then from there, your GX should be connected to your Wi-Fi network. So after you've established your internet connection on your Servo, there's a few settings that must be manually enabled on the touch display in order for us to correctly see your system and access the data over the VRM. Uh, so you go to the menu, uh, go to settings. First thing, you're gonna go into remote console. Be sure to disable password check. You have to double tap it. You'll see the confirmation pop up once it's been disabled. And then next, you want to uh, go to the enable on VRM setting and make sure that's enabled. So enabled settings you'll see have the, have the slider off to the right, and when the slider's in the right position or it's blue in color, that's how we know that it's been enabled. Okay, so back to the settings menu. Next, we're gonna go to the VRM online portal. 
On this page, make sure that VRM two-way communication is enabled. We'll tap that again, it slides to blue so it's, so it's checked. And then on this page as well, make sure you note your VRM portal ID. You can take a, a picture of this, you can write it down, or maybe just have the, the touch screen opener available, but you will need this VRM portal ID for later on in the setup process when we uh, link the installation to your VRM account. Um, this is also a good time to check your firmware on your Serbo. Uh, you can go to the firmware option. Uh, since we've connected it to Wi-Fi already, uh, you can go to online updates, press to check for updates. Uh, the system will let you know if there's an update available. It looks like here we do have an update available, so you can go ahead and manually initiate that update. And as part of the firmware update process, the Serbo will reset or reboot, and that will make all of the settings that we changed in the previous step uh, save. If your firmware is already up to date, you can go ahead and skip the firmware update, but you do, you do still want to perform a manual reboot after you punch in those settings, and that's gonna make all those settings stick, or in other words, it's gonna make sure the Servo GX saves those settings. Um, so if that's the case for your Servo, or maybe you've updated the firmware already, you can go ahead and go back to the main settings page, go to general, and we're gonna do a manual reboot. Once the Servo reboots, that'll save all the manual settings we just entered, and then the next step from there is to get on the VRM site and create our new account. Now that you've got your Servo GX connected to the internet, and you've manually enabled those few settings that allow us to see it remotely, now it's time to create a new account on the VRM site. This process can be done either on a mobile device using the VRM app, or on a laptop or computer using a browser. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do this account creation on a laptop. So in order to create a new VRM account, uh, first thing we need to go to Victron's website, so victronenergy.com. In the top right corner there, you'll see an option that says login. Uh, click on that, and then once the drop-down menu appears, click on VRM. That'll direct you to a new page where you can log into VRM, but since this is the first time we're accessing it, we're gonna go ahead and set up a new account. Uh, so towards the bottom of this page here, you click on register for free, and then here's where you're, you will enter your, your contact information to set up your VRM account. So in this case, I'm going to use our company name, Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. Okay, and then once you've got all that information entered there, you click register. So our registration is now complete and you'll receive an email in your inbox with a link to confirm your account. Once you've created your new VRM account, you will be sent a confirmation email to whatever email address you provided. So you'll need to log into your email, uh, find the confirmation from Victron, There'll be a link in that email that will route you and log in uh, to the VRM site. If needed, you may need to manually enter your email and password again to log in. So once we've uh, verified our email address, now you should be redirected to the VRM site. Now the first thing that you're going to see on this site, because we have not added our uh, equipment or our installation, it's going to prompt you to add a new installation. Okay, so in this case, uh, we are using the Servo GX as our bridge between the equipment and the internet. So you'd click on the Servo GX as your device. And then from here, uh, first thing you're gonna enter the VRM portal ID that we recorded in a previous step. Okay, once your portal's ID is in there, you can, you can name the installation. And then once that's entered there, you click Request Access. So now that we've linked your specific Servo GX to the VRM site, you will now see your installation showing up in your installation list on VRM. So you can go ahead and select that installation and now, now you're seeing the overview screen and we can see there's more options over here on the left uh, in terms of settings and different things we can, uh, we can select. 
So at this point, we now have our test uh, system here uh, connected to the internet and viewable on VRM. So the VRM is now reporting real-time data from, um, from our equipment. So the next step I'll show you here is how to invite NAS as a user. And now this will allow uh, one of our design engineers to access your system remotely, configure the settings, do any firmware updates, view performance, and, and even more. So uh, to do that, you click on your installation, uh, right? So here we're on the overview page again. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see a gray column with some other options. So you wanna go to settings, under settings, you click on users, and here you'll see, uh, in our case, a list of mostly everybody in our office, because this is our test system that we that we play around with, but uh, you, you won't have any users listed on here for your system uh, other than yourself and anybody else who you may have added up to this point. So to invite NAS as a user, you scroll down on this page under pending invitations, and you click on invite user. You can just uh, use our company name, Northern Arizona Wind and Sun, and then our email address, sales at solar-electric.com. Now this part's very, very important. When you add us as a user, be sure to enable full control. Otherwise, we're not able to change any settings or do any updates. Uh, obviously, we'll only make changes and do updates with your permission, but just make sure you, you add us with full control. So once that's all entered, you hit send, and then we will receive an invite to join your system uh, via email. So once you've sent us an invite to join your system, that's about it. From here, we're able to access it remotely from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. Uh, we can also set up a time to go over the system settings with you. I'd better understand your configuration or application. And again, make sure is everything is, is programmed and optimized as much as possible. We'll only change settings or do updates with your permission. And then if you do choose to remove our access or change us to monitoring only, that is possible once we've completed the initial configuration. When you purchase a complete system from NAS, we offer ongoing troubleshooting and technical support for the entire life of that system. If you're using Victron Energy equipment in your system, the VRM is a very powerful tool with a lot of useful features. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos, and you can also check out the Learning Center on our website. If you have any questions about Victron Energy equipment using the VRM site, or you need assistance designing a system of your own, give us a call, send us an email, and one of our design engineers can assist. Thanks for watching.